Hello people, today I will be talking about why to, when to and where to use provisionals in Terraform. Okay, so let's get on to the slides then. So yeah, uh, what would be the agenda for today? So agenda for today would be to first of all understand what are provisionals in Terraform and then understand local exec provisionals. See, uh, there are many provisionals in Terraform but today I will be only talking about the local exec provisionals. Because I have only the use case for that and also I have a use case for destroy time provisionals. We'll talk about in detail like what are destroy time provisionals. So it's just like a provisional when executed or when it is basically triggered at the destruction of a particular resource is called a destroy time provisionals. Okay. And should we use provisionals at all? Okay. So yeah, first of all, let's talk about what is provisional. So provisional is something which allows you to perform specific actions in order to prepare servers or other infrastructure objects okay so it could be a ec2 machine on aws a virtual machine on gcp or in azure you have azure vms right uh, now these you know actions could be either performed on your local machine which is your target machine from where you are triggering the you know terraform commands or it could be the remote machine the virtual machines that you just created using the terraform right so yeah but at the end Basically, it is just running a script. Okay, so let's get our hand dirty with Terraform code and let's check out this repository. Okay, so I have this repository called GitHub Asmiga Create Nginx. Okay, here uh, I will post this in the description of this video. Uh, but yeah, uh, to clone it, we can clone it from here. But I already have it cloned to save some time. And uh, let's see. Uh, what is the code inside my you know uh, repository so right now I deliberately don't have the provisionals okay inside my current code okay uh, if I open the ec2.tf you will not see anywhere where like you know I'm not using provisional anywhere okay so that's the thing and uh, I will face some issues as well like you know while uh, you know creating this ec2 instance uh, I will face some issues which I can only solve using provisionals and we'll see like where do I need to use that okay so first of all let's run the WTF apply minus auto approve okay now it would take some time to create the resources okay I have to be in the infra folder uh, so WTF is just the you know alias I have set I can show you which WTF WTF stands here for webinar terraform okay just to make it things clear okay okay let's allow it to you know create resources till then time we can go and just see over the script what does it do so it creates a vpc we have a vpc.tf here okay and uh, yeah that's all it does the vpc tf creates the vpc it creates internet gateway so that we can access our ec2 instances okay route table and you know public subnet and uh, like yeah yeah the, the, the prerequisites for creating a ec2 instance right and in the ec2.tf if you see we are basically creating a private key okay ssh private key and the corresponding key pair for this particular tls private key we are basically using it here and you know creating a aws key pair on aws using this particular you know uh sh key okay now the problem would be like where is the private key for this particular you know uh resource uh i haven't uh, put it anywhere okay i have only referred its public key open sh and even in the ec2 instance we are just refer referencing the key name of this aws key pair right so yeah i don't know where we will find the tls private key but we'll see like once this gets created We'll see how to SSH and can I SSH and the second problem is I am opening the SSH to the whole world. Now here I can use my IP but then my IP could very well change right. Uh, if I want to check what's my IP right now it would be like girl I have config config.me okay what's my IP it's in IPv6 I want in IPv4 how to do that okay let's do this okay this is good but then understand that this is you know uh, this can basically very well change right based on my network or it can very well change based on my internet service provider because I don't have a static IP right so uh, 
I can show it. Like I can basically I am connected to you know my Wi-Fi now. If I connect to my mobile hotspot, let's see what would be the IP now. Uh, okay. Uh, give it a time. I will say give give it a couple of minute. I would say okay. This is giving me IPv6. What about IPv4? Do I get IPv4? Yeah, I also get IPv4. Now you can see very well that it got changed, right? So basically now I cannot hard code my IP inside my you know code base and uh, even if I could I am not sure like whether it can change based on the you know my network settings right or wherever I am logging in from. Um, okay so that would mean that this is not something which I can do as of now and that is where you can see it is open to the whole world though this is not recommended okay. So that means like anyone who gets the SSH access, like SSH key file access, they can basically SSH into my instances and then basically my instance can be compromised and they can run any piece of code that they want to run from there. Uh, probably they will not run something good there. Okay. So yeah. Uh, okay. So we have the instances created, right? So we can see WTF output and it will show me the instances that got in created okay and the ssh command as well okay so this is the ssh command if i try to ssh using this uh okay let's ssh okay so there is no nginx pem file created okay so yeah that's the issue right identity file not accessible and yeah i did not actually stored it anywhere right i basically created the uh, the tls private key and used it to create a aws key pair and that particular AWS key pair name was being utilized in the EC2 instance. Now, even if I go to the console, let's say, right? So console would also even say that, you know, you just need to run SSH, you know, Nginx PEM file, but I don't have that private key pair file with me, right? So uh, private, yeah, I don't have that private SSH key with me. So how to go about it, right? Uh, definitely that is somewhere stored, right? Because uh, when that, when we have created this resource definitely that particular private key was created the public key and the private key but we can only you know see the public key as of now even from the within the instance also we'll be only seeing the public key and on the aws key pair you don't get the access to see that but yeah this is the only public key you would be able to see it so let's see like you know if we want to connect to one of the instances right so what does the console say the console says run this ssh engine which i am trying to do uh, but it doesn't work because I don't have this file okay with me so yeah we'll have to create it okay so there are ways to do that without using Terraform but that would mean that I have to do things manually okay and second thing I also wanted to show you the key pair right like let's go to the key pairs like even here right this nginx key pair that we have if I try to you know uh, access it like I don't see any details except of fingerprint right so there's nothing much detail like I cannot get the private key file for this Nginx uh, okay key pair. So yeah let's go and think about like where would the private key be stored. So if I see WTF state list and list a resource which is uh, you know uh, it will basically list all the resources right. So let's say uh, show me all the resources that has been created from the state file and this is the one aws uh, tls private key this okay so let's try to see what does it has okay what does the state file has for this particular resource okay so show this is the show command and then i would paste this right so let's see uh, i hope it would have the private key attribute and it has the public key pem file which i don't need it has public key open I don't need I want the private key PEM okay this is sensitive value that's why it's not showing but it is there somewhere and to get to this we can actually get to this how uh, we can pull the state file okay uh, and store it into some you know temp file okay in the temp directory so because uh, we want to see the contents of it okay uh, so let's call it as state.json okay and let's see and we'll open it into the id and see like if we can see the attributes this uh, you know private key pem attribute okay okay we have it here so let's cat temp state dot right 
So you can see here that we have this public key, public key open SSH. Do we have the private key? Yeah, we also have the private key pem p. Okay, we don't want this format. Okay, we want the one in the yeah this one private key pem file. So we have the private key as well, right? And you now know that the fact I am showing you this like you know on the screen share. Okay, uh, you can basically take a screenshot and do some you know image to text processing and get the pem file and basically SSH into my machine because that SSH access is open to the world, right? So we have two problems, okay? So first of all, we want this SSH key, be uh, the SSH key contents to be logged in and you know written to a file called Nginx pem. And the second thing is we also want to fetch our IP dynamically, okay? To basically update this, uh, you know, uh, ingress rule, okay? So for that, I already have the code, okay? I deliberately remove the local exec provisional snippets from here. So I will just do a git checkout head one commit back. Let's go one commit back. And that's all I need to do. And if you see now, I have this curl minus four, uh, I have config.me, the one command that I was trying to, you know, show my public IP through curl command. So you can see now this provision is what it is trying to do. It is basically every time the timestamp changes, which will change every time, right? Every second it will change. It will basically get my IP, okay? From this command and paste it into this uh, you know uh, write it into a file called temp my ip.txt and that particular file i am basically reading it okay uh, here data local file my ip and then the contents of that my ip okay local file i am using it here okay so this is how you use a provisional uh, local exec and to basically you know fetch my public ip of my particular machine okay my current machine and then put it into a file and use that particular file contents into the ingress rule. Okay, fine. That was the one part. The second part is about creating that, uh, you know, SSH PEM file. Okay, SSH key PEM file. Okay, so here again, when we are creating this AWS key pair, we are basically saying that, hey, uh, do the, you know, echo the contents of the TLS private key, this dot private key open SSH, the attribute which I am interested in and put it into this, uh, you know, in my home directory dot SSH, put this where SSH key name here is, if I show you where it is, this Nginx. Okay, so basically it will put, uh, you know, uh, create a Nginx dot pem file in this home directory under dot SSH folder. Okay, and I'm even changing the file permissions because, you know, it is required, it is like, you know, kind of mandated by the SSH client that your file permission should be only readable or writable from the owner and everyone else in your machine should not have any access to it. Okay. So that's the thing there. And once, let's say if I'm destroying this resource, right, let's say if I'm destroying this key pair, so I even don't want the SSH key file on my local to, you know, sustain. Okay. And it should not persist. So basically what I'm saying, if I am deleting this key pair, okay from aws that does that clearly means the corresponding file that i had on my local machine should also get deleted and that is why i have this provisional again local exec but this is when the when when would this run it will run only when uh, this particular resource get destroyed so basically what i am saying is when this particular resource is getting created run this provisional and when this particular resource is getting destroyed okay uh, at that time run this provisional okay so you have this destroyed time provisional okay and now uh, things would be much smoother but before that i will just destroy whatever i have created okay hmm. so yeah i meanwhile uh, uh, the time it is taking to destroy i will just suggest you people to you know keep a check on my LinkedIn page called Dhasu DevOps and I will post the you know details of it into the description and uh, yeah uh, we'll see like you know uh, what next can we cover as part of these uh, sessions and we do have live sessions uh, where you can ask your questions I would also highly appreciate if you can put your questions down below in the comment section uh, but yeah, I understand that, you know, uh, interactive session would have been much better. The level of engagement you get in uh, a live session is much better. And also the networking that you get. Okay. So yeah, let it destroy. It will take some time.
uh, and that is the beauty of Terraform, right? Like I can keep on chit chatting about anything. I can talk about my, you know, uh, the weather at my place, okay, or maybe the onion prices which are increasing day by day, or some other like, yeah, anything and any 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 small talk that can be done. But yeah, uh, it, this is a recorded session, right? So it's just a monologue that I'm doing here. Okay, so it has been destroyed. Now let's again create this. Now given that uh, we have uh, you know made changes to the our code. Okay, we have this local exec now uh, at two places. At first place uh, where we are basically fetching the my IP and putting it into a file, reading from that particular file and putting it here uh, in the you know in the ingress route and only allowing allowing uh, access to the machine on port sh the port 22 uh, from my machine okay so that's the one thing we are doing and the second thing where we are using local exec is to basically create the sh file okay private sh key file on my machine and even you know giving this file permission as you know uh, 400 which is only readable by me or my my user okay uh, on my machine and uh, then we are also using a destroy time provisioner which actually deletes the private keys stored on my machine if the aws key pair is getting deleted okay so yeah uh, let's see uh, let's uh, you know again run the apply and let's see the the things that i have to do or not do because things have been automated using the local exec provisioner okay I have not given the minus auto approve this time. Uh, I will just give yes. So this time it is running local exec provisioner. Okay, you can see this. Okay, it is actually putting it into cat temp. Uh, you know, basically uh, putting the content into the temp myip.txt file. And I can show you that inside temp there would be a file created myip.txt, right? So yeah, that has been created as part of the Terraform ex code execution itself. And yeah. And again, uh, this time, uh, see the good part here is because it was uh, using, uh, you know, the sensitive value of the TLS private key, okay, which was the private key. And uh, that's why it basically suppressed the output due to sensitive value in the config. So it will not, you know, log those, you know, contents, which would be the private key file into the log. And that is a good part, right? So, yeah. And, and and yeah because it has been executed i can also show you that ls uh, dot ssh now a uh, nginx pem file would be would have been also created right uh, it has been created so now i am good right uh, like i am secure from both the sides like first of all i don't have to uh, get the state file and you know see the contents out of it and copy and paste and create a file out of it manually and the second thing is i also don't have to open the ssh access to everyone in the world and i just open it to the my ip and that to automatically right using terraform i don't have to manually go to the console and do that things okay fine so where we are so the output would and even the i would say even the output would uh, give me the ssh command right like what is the ssh command to ssh into the instances so i don't have to again go back to the you know ec2 console and see the you know the public dns of the instances that have been created okay so let's try to ssh in one of them yes It would take some time because uh, the EC2 instance uh, does take some time to you know kind of get ready and accept such connection. Uh, what about the other instance? Like, can I connect to the other instance? Maybe the other instance is up and ready, so I can connect to the other instance. No, not yet. Let me just go and check on the console instances. Okay, what about the security group for these instances? Uh, let me check that. Uh, it says that it has been allowed from this public IP. 
is my public ip the same uh, let me check uh, what's my ip because sometimes it happens like some of your you know uh, some uh, servers give you some different ip so i'm just look waiting for see 152.158.156.122 and this one here is something different right and if i do a curl ifconfig.me dot me it would come to uh, this is gonna have to give minus four it is something different right so that's the problem here but yeah let's do one thing let's uh, go with this again let's get back to our broadband and let's see whether that will work fine or not okay so let, let's go again curl minus four i have config me this gives me that and if i go to the watch my ip and again do the you know again refresh this page and try to see whether both gives me the same and then i will be confident enough okay i think this is good so basically i can again run the dev form apply uh, and this should be good now yeah uh, this is something beyond my control that you know the what's my ip is giving a different ip and i have config.me is giving me a different ip now i can also go to there are other third party you know uh, like uh, what should you say there are websites okay which gives you the uh, your ip now i have to just think about like which is the one which is more robust okay so this one is not giving me yet any response what about uh, if I don't give minus four? Will that work? Let's see. Yeah, that works. What about but but if I'm presenting my you know exposing my okay IP before that also works. Fine. Okay. So there are other as well. Okay. Uh, they have more like there is one for Amazon AWS also check dot Amazon AWS IP something like that. I don't remember it. I will put it those in the description. Okay. But now let's just try to assess now okay the good part is i didn't have to do anything manually and change the sh uh, sorry the you know uh, source ip in the security group and the nginx pem file is also created so yeah you see i am inside the machine if i want to show you i can again curl from here to i have config dot me and show the public ip to you for this instance which is 34207216167 which you should be able to see it here as well where is it yeah this one 34207 this one the public ip for this instance would be 34207216 so yeah that was all for today so let's get back to the slides again and do a quick recap okay so what we did where we yeah, used the local exec provisioners at first place we used it for fetching my machine's public ip to put that ip in the security group inbound ssh and the second place we used it to store the ssh private key into the dot ssh folder okay on my machine so both the times we ran the local exec provisioner for my local machine right so yeah so that's why we have local exec there is one called remote exec but i didn't have the use case for it right and we also use the local exec at a destroyed time okay uh, where we deleted the ssh key from my local machine when the infra is destroyed i have not shown it but i can always you know run the tab from this and you will see that that particular file gets deleted okay so should we use provisional at all so provisional as a measure of pragmatism so basically Terraform has given you provisional because they understand that not everything can be, you know, uh, done in their declarative manner and not every every use case they have covered using the Terraform, you know, resources. And there's a considerable amount of complexity and uncertainty to Terraform usage whenever you use this provisional. So just for the pragmatism, they have given it, but then it also you know increases some complexity and uncertainty to the terraform users because they don't know what kind of code that you are going to run you can always run rm minus rf and slash like the root directory and then mess up the whole infrastructure right the instance okay so that is up to you and yeah it is recommended to use provisional only if there is no other option right so if you don't have any other option then only use that i didn't had it i had the other option to do things manually then but I didn't want it to do it. So that's why 
uh, I had to use the provisional R as a you know last resort. So yeah, um, why should we learn DevOps? Definitely, we should learn DevOps because we want to automate stuff and we want to break the silos between the development and operations. And we don't want to basically you know uh, keep things manual and take time and do human error. And basically that because of that we will do a faster delivery. Okay, so yeah, uh, this is not all. DevOps is much more. We'll see that we can anyway see in the slide that there are so many tools that I would talk about in my course, but then yeah, there is much left after that also. Okay, and so reach out to us to learn more. I will put the you know link to connect to us in the description. And see you soon tomorrow at eight a.m. We will have the sessions and to register. Uh, just you know, DM us on the WhatsApp.